Hello students, welcome to Read Med Prep Academy channel. Today in Classical Genetics Part 4, we are going to discuss about intragenic interactions and intergenic interactions. First let us talk about intragenic interactions. Interactions taking place between the alleles of the same gene that is alleles at the same locus is called intragenic or intralocus gene interactions. What are the types of intragenic interactions? The common examples are incomplete indominance, codominance, multiple alleles and pleiotropic genes. Now let us talk about incomplete dominance where there is no blending of genes. The German botanist Karl Korenz in 1905 did an experiment in a 4 o'clock plant Mirabilis jalapa when pure breeding homozygous red parent which is represented as r to the power of 1 r to the power of 1 is crossed with the homozygous white parent r to the power of 2 r to the power of 2 the phenotype of the f1 hybrid form was heterozygous pink which contained the genotype r to the power of 1 and r to the power of 2 the f1 heterozygous phenotype differs from both the parental homozygous phenotype. This cross did not exhibit the character of the dominant parent, but it was an intermediate color pink. When one allele is not completely dominant to another allele, it shows incomplete dominance. Such allele interaction is known as incomplete dominance. F1 generation produces intermediate phenotype pink colored flowers. When pink colored flower plants of F1 generation were interbred in F2, both phenotypic and genotypic ratios were found to be identical as 1 is to 2 is to 1. 1 is red, is to 2 is pink, is to 1 is white. The genotypic ratio is 1 r to the power of 1, r to the power of 1, is to 2, r to the power of 1, r to the power of 2, is to 1, r to the power of 2, r to the power of 2. From this, we conclude that the alleles themselves remain discrete and unaltered, proving the Mendel's law of segregation. The phenotype and the genotypic ratios are the same. There is no blending of genes. Here you can see in the image where the incomplete dominance in 4 o'clock plant is shown. The parent generation is R to the power of 1, R to the power of 1, which is red color. And on the right side, you can see R to the power of 2, R to the power of 2, which is white color. And when they are crossed, the F1 generation that is obtained had R to the power of 1, R to the power of 2, which is heterozygous. And the phenotype that is formed is pink. In the F2 generation, when the pink colored plants were selfed, the F2 generation produced the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1. One plant had red colored flowers, two plants had pink colored flowers and one plant had white colored flowers. The genotypic ratio was r to the power of 1 r to the power of 1 is to r to the power of 1 r to the power of 2 is to r to the power of 2 r to the power of 2. In the F2 generation, R to the power of 1 and R to the power of 2 genes segregate and recombine to produce the red, pink and white in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1. R to the power of 1 allele codes for the enzyme responsible for the formation of the red pigment in the flower. R to the power of 2 allele codes for a defective enzyme. R1 and R2 genotypes produce only enough red pigments to make the flower pink. 2 r to the power of 1 r to the power of 1 are needed for producing red flowers. 2 r to the power of 2 r to the power of 2 genes are needed for producing white flowers. So if blending had taken place, the original pure traits would not have appeared and all F2 plants would have pink flowers. So there is no blending here. It is very clear that Mendel's particulate inheritance takes place in this cross which is confirmed by the reappearance of the original phenotype in F2. Now 
let us discuss the incomplete dominance at the molecular level. Gene expression is explained in a quantitative way. The wild type allele, which is a functional allele, when present in two copies, r to the power of 1, r to the power of 1, produces a functional enzyme which synthesizes the red pigments in the flowers. The mutant allele, which is a defective allele, in two copies, r to the power of 2, r to the power of 2, produces an enzyme which cannot synthesize the necessary red pigment in the flower. So the white flower is due to the mutation causing complete loss of function. So the F1 intermediate phenotype that is formed is a heterozygote having the genotype r to the power of 1, r to the power of 2, has one copy of the allele r to the power of 1. So the R1, which produces 50% of the functional protein in the heterozygote, resulting in half of the pigment of the red flowered plant and so the flowers are pink in color. The intermediate phenotype, pink heterozygote, with 50% of the functional protein is not enough to create the red phenotype homozygous which makes 100% of the functional protein. Now let us move on to co-dominance. This pattern occurs due to simultaneous or joint expression of both the alleles in the heterozygote. The phenomenon in which two alleles are both expressed in the heterozygous individual is known as co-dominance. Examples red and white flowers of camellia. Inheritance of sickle cell hemoglobin, ABO blood group system in human beings. Here you can see the co-dominance in camellia flowers, where the white flower is represented as the genotype C to the power of W, C to the power of W, and the red flowers are represented as C to the power of R, C to the power of R. And because of the co-dominance, the flowers that are formed in the F1 generation are heterozygote with C to the power of R and C to the power of W. And the phenotype contains the petals having the white color as well as the red color. So in human beings, I to the power of A and I to the power of B alleles of I gene are co-dominant, which follows Mendel's law of segregation. In the table on the right side, you can see the genotype and the blood type. I, A, I, A, the blood group is A. I, A, I, B, the blood group is AB. IA and small i blood group is A. IB, IB the blood group is B. IB and small i the blood group is B. Where both are small i the blood group is O. The co-dominance was demonstrated in plants with the help of electrophoresis or chromatography for protein or flavonoid substance. Example Gossypium hirsutum and Gossypium sturtianum, their F1 hybrid amphiploid was tested for seed proteins by electrophoresis. Both the parents have different banding pattern for their seed proteins. Here in this image you can see the electrophoresis pattern that had been done for Gossypium species for seed proteins. In hybrids, additive banding pattern was noticed. Their hybrid shows the presence of both the types of proteins similar to their parents. The heterozygote genotype gives rise to a phenotype distinctly different from either of the homozygous genotypes. The F1 heterozygotes produce a F2 progeny in a phenotypic and genotypic ratios of 1 is to 2 is to 1. Now let us move on to lethal genes. An allele which has the potential to cause the death of an organism is called lethal allele. In 1907, E. Bauer reported a lethal gene in snapdragon, antirhinum species. It's an example for recessive lethality. In snapdragon, there are three kinds of plants. Green plants with chlorophyll, with the genotype capital C, capital C. Yellowish green plants with carotenoids are referred to as pale green or golden or aurea plants. The genotype is capital C and small c. White plants without any chlorophyll. The genotype is represented as small c, small c. The genotype of the heterozygous green plants is capital C, capital C. The genotype of the homozygous white plant is small c, small c. The aurea plants have the genotype capital C and small c because they are heterozygous of green and white plants. When two such aurea plants are crossed, the F1 progeny has identical phenotypic and genotypic ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1. Whereas 1 is green with the genotype capital C, capital C. 2 is aurea plants with capital C and small c. 
and one is white with small c, small c. Since the white plants lack chlorophyll pigment, they will not survive. So the F2 ratio is modified into 1 is to 2. In this case, the homozygous recessive genotype small c, small c is lethal. Here you can see in this image the F1 heterozygote antirenum aurea capital C small c is self with antirenum aurea with capital C small c and the F2 generation that is obtained is 1 is green capital C capital C 2 is aurea capital C small c and 1 is small c small c and the white does not contain the chlorophyll hence it does not survive. The term lethal is applied to those changes in the genome of an organism which produces effects severe enough to cause death. Lethality is a condition in which the death of a certain genotype occurs prematurely. The fully dominant or fully recessive lethal allele kills the carrier individual only in its homozygous condition. So the F2 genotypic ratio will be 2 is to 1 or 1 is to 2 respectively. Now what is pleiotrophy? It is a single gene that affects the multiple traits and this alters the phenotype of the organism. The pleomorphic gene influences a number of characters simultaneously and such genes are called pleomorphic genes. Genes were crossed with a variety of peas having white flowers, light colored seeds and no spot on the axils of the leaves. The three traits for flower color, seed color and leaf axil spot all were inherited together as a single unit. Another example of this pleomorphic gene is sickle cell anemia. Here you can see a diagrammatic depiction of pleomorphy where a single gene that is present in the chromosome controls multiple traits for example trait A, trait B and trait C. That gene is called the pleiotropic gene. Now to sum up the incomplete dominance, the study example is the flower color in Mirabilis jalapa. The phenotypic F2 ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. Another example is flower color in snapdragon, antirenum species. The phenotypic F2 ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. And the second is codominance. Example is ABO blood group system in humans. The phenotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. Now what is intergenic interactions? Interlocus interactions takes place between the alleles at different loci, between alleles of different genes. It includes epistasis, duplicate genes, complementary genes and supplementary genes. Now in this table, it is sum up the intergenic or non-allelic interaction. Number one is dominant epistasis. The example is fruit color in summer squash. What is the F2 phenotypic ratio? 12 is to 3 is to 1. Number 2 is recessive epistasis. The flower color of antirenum species is an example. The F2 ratio of the phenotype is 9 is to 3 is to 4. Third one is the duplicate genes with cumulative effect. The example is fruit shape in summer squash. The phenotypic ratio in F2 is 9 is to 6 is to 1. Number 4 is complementary genes. The example is flower color in sweet peas. 9 is to 7 is the ratio of the phenotype in the F2 generation. Number 5 is the supplementary genes which is studied in the green color in maize. The F2 ratio of the phenotype is 9 is to 3 is to 4. Now the sixth is inhibitor genes. The leaf color in rice plants is an example. The phenotypic ratio in the F2 generation is 13 is to 3. Number 7 is the duplicate genes. The example studied was a seed capsule shape or the fruit shape in shepherd's pus called Buzza Buzza Pastoris. The F2 ratio of the phenotype is 15 is to 1. Now let us see one by one. What is dominant epistasis? It is a gene interaction in which two alleles of a gene at one locus interfere and suppress or mask the phenotypic expression of a different pair of alleles of another gene at another locus. So the gene that suppresses or masks the phenotypic expression of a gene at another locus is called epistatic. The gene whose expression is interfered by non-allelic genes and prevents from exhibiting its character is known as hypostatic. 
when both the genes are present together the phenotype is determined only by the epistatic gene and not by the hypostatic gene in the summer squash the fruit color locus has a dominant allele capital w for white color and recessive allele small w for colored fruit capital w allele is dominant that marks the expression of any color in another locus hypostatic allele capital g is for yellow fruit and its recessive allele small g for green fruit so in the first locus the white is dominant to color whereas in the second locus yellow is dominant to green and the f1 plants after crossing capital w capital w small g small g and small w small w capital g capital g are crossed and the genotype w w capital g capital g small w small w capital g capital g the f1 plants have white fruit when the white fruit with genotype capital w capital w small g small g is crossed with the yellow fruit with genotype small w small w capital g capital g the f1 plants have white fruit and are heterozygous their genotype is capital w small w capital g and small g when f1 heterozygous plants with the genotype capital w small w capital g small g are crossed they give rise to f2 with the phenotypic ratio of 12 white fruits 3 yellow fruits and 1 green fruit since w is the epistatic to the alleles capital g and small g the white which is dominant masks the effect of yellow or green homozygous recessive small w small w genotypes only can give the colored fruits 4 by 16 double recessive small w small w small g small g will give green fruit 1 by 16 the plants having only capital g in a genotype small w small w capital g small g or small w small w capital g capital g will give yellow fruit 3 by 16 here in this image you can see that the white fruit having the genotype capital w capital w small g small g is crossed with the yellow fruit small w small w capital g capital g the gametes formed by the white fruit are capital w and small g and the gametes formed by the yellow fruit are small w and capital g and the f1 generation obtained is heterozygous capital w small w capital g small g since capital w is present the fruits are white and when these heterozygotes are self in the f2 generation the gametes produced are capital w capital g capital w small g small w capital g and small w small g when it is put in a checkerboard the number of fruits obtained are white 12 yellow is 3 and green is 1 and the phenotypic ratio obtained is 12 is to 3 is to 1 now what is recessive epistasis the ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 4 the recessive allele small a small a of one gene locus hides the effect of another gene locus for example capital b capital b capital b small b or small b small b and expresses itself phenotypically the alleles of b locus express themselves only when the epistatic locus has dominant alleles example capital a capital a or capital a small a this will modify the ratio from 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 to the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 4 here in this image you can see the checkerboard table where the purple and the brown are crossed the purple has the parent genotype of capital p capital p small q small q and the brown has small p small p capital q capital q and the f1 generation obtained is red color capital p small p capital q small q is the genotype and when this self the gametes obtained are p q capital capital p small q small p capital q and small p small q when they are put in a checkerboard the ratios obtained are 9 is to 3 is to 4 as the genotypic ratio whereas the phenotype 9 is red 3 is purple and 4 is brown now what are the duplicate genes with cumulative effect the ratio is 9 is to 6 is to 1 both the dominant non allelic alleles 
when present together give a new phenotype but when allowed to express independently they give their own phenotypic expression separately in the absence of any dominant allele the recessive allele is expressed here you can see the duplicate genes with cumulative effect in water squash when the presence of a dominant allele in two separate genes results in a new phenotype example in shape of a squash dominant alleles capital G and capital S must both be present to form a new phenotype both the capital G and capital S genes control the shape of the fruit where a spear shape is dominant to long when capital G and capital S are present together it, it results in a disc shaped fruit the genotype small g small g capital S capital S the fruit is shown below what is complementary gene the ratio is 9 is to 7 where the flower color in sweet peas is indicated where the precursor is there which forms the intermediate by the gene C and this intermediate by the gene P and enzyme P forms anthocyanin if two genes are involved in a specific pathway and functional products from both are required for expression when one recessive allelic pair at either allelic pair would result in a mutant phenotype if a pure line P plant with colored flowers genotype capital C capital C capital P capital P is crossed to pure line homozygous recessive plant with white flowers the F1 plant will have colored flowers and a capital C small c capital P small p genotype is obtained and the ratio obtained by the complementary gene is 9 is to 7 9 are colored flowers and 7 are white flowers 9 flowers which are colored are because of the formation of the pigment and the seven flowers do not form the pigment here you can see in this image the ratio formed where the white variety and the white variety in the F1 generation are crossed and all the plants that are obtained are purple and when these are self fertilized in the F2 generation the gametes obtained are capital C capital P capital C small p small c capital P small c small p and when it is put in a checkerboard the ratio obtained is 9 is to 7 that means 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 9 plants are purple 3 is to 3 is to 1 are white plants now what are supplementary genes the ratio obtained is 9 is to 3 is to 4 in supplementary gene interaction the dominant allele of one of the two genes governing a character produces phenotypic effect however dominant allele of the other gene does not produce a phenotypic effect on its own but when it is present with dominant allele of the first gene it modifies the phenotypic effect produced by that gene here in this image you can see the checkerboard the parent are capital C capital C and small p small p and another parent is small c small c capital P capital P the example is grain color in maize and the F1 generation obtained is capital C, small c, capital P, small p. When it is selfed in the F2 generation, the ratio obtained is 9 is to 3 is to 4. Now, what are the differences between the complementary genes and supplementary genes? Genes which complement the effects of each other and the presence of both the genes is essential for the production of wild phenotype. Whereas in supplementary genes, two independent pairs of genes interacting in such a manner that one dominant factor produces its effect whether the other is present or not while the second gene can produce its effect only in the presence of the first in complementary genes the dominant genes cannot produce independent traits whereas in supplementary genes dominant genes can produce independent traits which are different from the combined trait in complementary genes the phenotypic ratio of the F2 generation is 9 is to 7 Whereas in supplementary genes, the phenotypic ratio of F2 generation is 9 is to 3 is to 4. The example of complementary genes, purple flower color of sweet pea and red eye color in Rosophila. The example of supplementary genes, purple grain color in maize and coat color of mice. Now what are inhibitor genes? The ratio formed is 13 is to 3. When 
dominant allele of one gene locus capital B in homozygous capital B capital B and heterozygous capital B small b condition produce the same phenotype the F2 ratio becomes 13 is to 3 instead of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 while homozygous recessive small b small b condition produces different phenotype Homozygous recessive small b small b condition inhibits phenotypic expression of other genes so known as inhibitory gene action. Here in this image you can see the gametes formed by the F1 generation capital I capital P capital I small p small i capital P small i small p and the ratio obtained is 13 is to 3. 13 is green and 3 is purple. This is the inheritance of leaf color in rice in the F2 due to the inhibitory genes. And the ratio 13 is green and 3 is purple obtained. Now what are duplicate dominant genes? The ratio is 15 is to 1. The dominant alleles of both the genes produce the same phenotypic effect giving the ratio 15 is to 1. At least one of the dominant allele is necessary for the phenotypic effect. Example capital A capital A capital B capital B capital A small a capital B small b capital A small a small b small b small a small a capital B capital B small a small a capital B small b give one phenotype in the absence of all the dominant genes only in case of small a small a small b small b the recessive phenotype will be expressed the duplicate genes are also called pseudo alleles here you can see in shepherd's purse plant, the seed capsule occurs in two shapes. Example, triangular and ovoid shape. Ovoid shape seed capsule occurs when both genes are present in homozygous recessive condition. Here you can see the parents, the triangular shape, capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B. The ovoid shape, small a, small a, small b, small b. The gametes obtained you can see. On the left side, this capital A, capital B. On the right side, you can see a small a, small b. And the F1 generation formed is capital A, small a, capital B, small b, which is triangular. And when they are selfed, the gametes obtained in the F2 are capital A, capital B, capital A, small b, small a, capital B, and small a, small b. When they are put in a checkerboard, the summary obtained is 15 by 16 is triangular and 1 by 16 is ovoid. So today in classical genetics part 4, we have discussed about intragenic interactions and the intergenic interactions. Thank you. Kindly subscribe, like, share and comment to channel Read Med Prep Academy. Kindly log on to www.readmedprepacademy.com. Our Facebook ID is Read Med Prep Academy. Our email is readmedprepacademy at gmail.com. Kindly post your questions in the comment box. We will reply with appropriate answers. Thank you very much.